a wrist. So in effect, I'm creating power at the top, and then I'm storing it by rotating my pelvis first, and then my hands then come into a nice delivery position for then my release to happen. If you get the sequence right, it makes the potential power far, far greater. So I go up to the top, unwind the hips first, then that pulls my shoulders round, helps me to hang on to my wrist hinge, and then I get to the delivery position, and then I release. So like a throw, if I was going to throw a ball, I'd swing my arm back, I would move my lower body first, so that would pull my shoulders round, and then helps me hang on to that release, but then the kinetic energy to be applied to the throw. So, it must start with the hips first. Hips, shoulders, arms. Most golfers that I see start with their top half, and that's the biggest mistake. So when they start down, they start down with their shoulders, arms, and the, the hips really are for um, for stability purposes rather than for a way to apply extra power to the speed. So when you're swinging, try to focus on getting the hips to turn first, not to slide. We don't want to slide because that tips our body back and makes our power release early, called casting. We don't want to start with the shoulders because when we start with the shoulders first, although that might feel strong, what I'm doing is I'm throwing the club out of plane, out on the wrong path, and then it gets all this power released too soon. So, recapping again, hips must start first, then the shoulders, and then the release. The hips must be twisting nice and fast to get the shoulders really mobile. Helps us to hang on to that wrist hinge there. We don't want to get the arms, shoulders working first, you can see how sort of ugly the animation looks as I move my body top half first. We want to start with the hips, get them going round first, then the shoulders, and then the arms at the bottom. And then we apply much more clubhead speed at the ball. 